Hello and thanks for joining us again at Nomad PU. My name is Wayne Roberts. I wanted to cover off today post Caravan Canby show in Perth where we had a great response and a lot of good questions from customers. Questions typically the same. Uh, so we're going to cover off how to get the most out of the Nomad PDU. You bought a Nomad PDU or you're thinking about buying the power source and you've gone to the expense of buying it, but how do you get the most out of it? If you're free camping and off gridding completely, it's very important to understand how your whole system works. So we have a number of accessories that help you to understand your complete uh, solution and also to diagnose if there are any issues. So the first one I wanted to look at was a power analyzer because it's quite straightforward and simple. It is an analyzer, so it allows you to analyze current and amperage, wattage, etc. And you don't really have to understand too much about it. But the great thing about this, it allows you to diagnose if there's any issues with uh, any part of your whole solution from your solar panel, right through to your AC DC charger, DC DC charger, and also outputs on the Nomad. So basically what you've got here is a source and an, a load. Load is typically your battery, source is where your power is coming from. So you connect the source to the solar panel, connect it, and it will tell you how much voltage is it being pushed out or coming out of the solar panel. And it gives you an idea. Because a lot of people will say, oh, their solar panel should be doing this, uh, or used to do that. Simple thing is that conditions change, so putting this in will tell you exactly what it's doing. So just to give you an idea, I'm going to plug in the uh, AC-DC charger, which comes with the Nomad, the 8 amp charger. I'm going to plug that in. Now, the unit's fully charged at 12.6. 12 12.4 to 12.7, fully charged. So this charger should be charging at 12.6, theoretically, to, to get the unit fully charged. So what I'll do is I'll take my AC-DC charger, like so, and plug it in to here, that's to the source. And then what happens, it comes up and it tells me on the screen, I don't know if you can see that, but it's about 12.57, it'll go up to 12.6, 12.63. So I know that this charger is working fine. And then if that unit doesn't charge up completely to 12.4, there might be an issue with the unit. But tell you what you'll find is that if the unit will only charge 11, 11 and a half, 11.1, um, and it charges up from the solar poles, because that's going through its own MPVT, you plug in this and it tells you that it's only putting out 11, 11 and a half volt, you know that this is actually faulty, it needs to be replaced. You can still use it, but it's not going to give the unit full charge. And if you don't have any other way of charging, then you need to look at it. The other thing you can do with the power analyzer is you might say, well, um, I'm not sure if my screen is uh, correlating to what is my output. You can simply take the unit again, and look at the load, and say load, connect it to say the Anderson over here, and it will tell me, uh, in, it will tell me how much voltage, which is 11.85, 11.85 is coming out of the Nomad, and the screen over here said 11.9, so it's calibrated, it's fine. So it tells me there's no problems on the output. So if I turn the switching off, um, this would tell me that there's a fault, say for example with the output, so it's not working. So if you had a fault with one of the outputs or, or with the output in general, you can check it with the analyzer. So again, if you're looking at the solar panel, you can see if the solar panel has issues by plugging into the source, it's put it into load. If I wanted to see the SIGA DC, you would have seen these. If I'm charging from a vehicle, Okay, so this would plug into my car. You would have seen these. If not, go to nomadpu.com. Do you look at DC DC charging? Sigma DC, grab and go. Basically, you plug it into the Sigma socket, 5 and 10 amp options, and then you plug it into the vehicle. So, this is a 10 amp one I've got here. Just for an example to show you how it works, I can plug in the source, which is where it's coming from there. I plug it into that. And let's pretend that this is a car. Okay, that's a car. I plug it in. And then I'll plug it into over here. And it tells me that it's charging at 10.08 amp. So that tells me, okay, that system's working. And I know that for a fact. Because if I didn't have this, what's to say it's charging at only 1 amp or 2 amp? You could actually plug this in. Yes, it's going to charge, that's fine. But it's a 10 amp. A module. Is there a fault with it? Yes, no. So you can plug this in and say, my systems are all working fine. And you can test everything. You don't have to be an uh, electrician to be able to test it. It's very simple and very straightforward to use the power analyzer. Great tool to have. You can use it on your AGM, let acid gel up to 200 watts. So it's a great little tool. And for the sake of $45, when you're spending a grand on a Nomad, for an extra $100, $200, $200 you can get all the additional accessories that allow you to understand exactly about your off-grid. So that's the power analyzer, 200 uh, 
200 amp power analyzer. The other product that's very important is your uh, pocket inverter. These are 150 watt pocket inverters. Uh, they're around that $40 mark as well from ourselves or from our partners. They're great because they got 240 uh, output, 150 watt. Very important to understand, it doesn't mean you can plug anything into it. Talking about inverters, while we're on the subject, if you want to run your compressors, your winches, your microwaves, your ninjas, you know, all those high powered things, then get yourself a two, three hundred, two or three thousand watt inverter, connect up to your crank battery with the car running, run it off that for the two or three minutes you want to use it. There's no point trying to kill one of these if you're out free camping. When you've got a battery, it's the most important thing you're going to have on you when you're out and you're free camping or you're out in the bush, don't destroy the unit. So don't draw out too much current. These have a maximum output of 20 amp. We still get three or four questions a week, what the outputs are, and then also the, the fact that people are overdrawing, so they're pulling too much current, the unit will shut down. That's another tutorial we're gonna cover after this one, is how to reset a unit. Uh, if you've done a, an overdraw, so you pull out too much current, um, or you've dead shouldered it, and they're very, very common mistakes. There's no reason to do it. Um, it just means that you think you can get 20 amp out of it, you should be able to get 25, 30. Absolutely not. It's designed to protect yourself. Don't try and pull any more than 20 amp. You're gonna be out in the middle of nowhere and you're gonna risk shutting it down. And the thing is, these pocket inverters are great because if you have to reset the Nomad, exactly what you can do with the Nomad is you need to put a current into it to reset it. So you need your AC-DC charger. Okay, a lot of people don't have a solar panel. So they might have the AC-DC charger, but where are they gonna plug it into? If you've got a pocket inverter, you've got a vehicle around, you can plug the pocket inverter into the vehicle and then you can take your AC-DC charger and plug it in, plug it into, your, uh, into the inverter, plug it into the car, and away you go. And then you can charge it at 8 amp from your AC-DC charger. This pulls 109 watt, this is 150 watt. To give you an idea what you can run 150 watt on, basically your uh, laptop charges around about sort of 70 to 90 uh, watt, but I would run my this is my Ryobi 18 volt pack that I run. I run a couple of these at a time. This will pull about 6 amp when it's empty. It's quite full at the moment. Um, it's only going to pull a little bit because it's nearly full. Um, I've got another um, cordless uh, drill set up over here, but I run a, typically a couple of inverters like this, but I don't draw. I don't draw more if I've got a plug in like this than 10 amp from each socket. What I've got here is I've got a drill plugged in like this, and I can run this. It's just under 10 amp. I've also got the fridge plugged in right at the moment. There's no problem because I have 20 amp maximum output. So there's no problem doing that. Just as long as I don't go over 10 amp from each of the, uh, the, the actual sockets. Like so. so that's the pocket inverter and it's a great tool to have. Not only for resetting the Nomad, but running all your small tools like your Dremels, charging all like these are all 80 volts you can, and your, like the Walsh and Walkies, those types of things to be able to charge them. For the sake of $48 worthwhile having. So that's your pocket inverter, 150 watt. Again, don't try and put a thousand watt inverter into these. Why don't we have inverters in the unit? For the very simple reason, as soon as people see this, this is also the European, American, um, and the obviously Australian put the 240, because this is a 110 range 240 volt. But as soon as people see this, they plug anything into it, they cook the inverter, the inverter's inside the unit, you've got a unit that's dead, um, you destroyed it, you've got to bring it back either under warranty or repair just because you messed it up the inverter. So having all those gimmicky, great, fantastic things is fine, but from our experience, people will make a mistake if there's any chance to do it. So reading instructions is a very good idea to start with. I know they're fun to throw away the set fire with, but you really should read the instructions. It does help. Um, the other thing is that uh, you can look at things like the Bluetooth uh, battery monitor. This is a great little product. Again, these for uh, 70 odd dollars. And they'll let you under, let you know from your phone, which I don't have with Dr. Helmy, but it has a little application you download. Even I found it easy to download, and straight away you can put four devices on there, which means you have four of them, and that will tell you the, the amount of volt that is in the actual Nomad. Got to remember though with these, because they're designed for AGM lead acid and gel, they'll pick up the voltage being charged once it's over, say, 13 volt. This is fully charged at 12.6, so it may not show you the charging profile of the Nomad but you can sit, say, 10 minutes away and not have to go and worry about looking at the Nomad. You can see it on your phone as to how much voltage is in there. So for the sake of 70 bucks, just plug it in, like so. If I pulled that out and moved it, um, I could do that as well. So the little lug in there, the little 2.1, that's, that's a C6CV jack. That's also included in here. You can take the little uh, eyelets off. That's designed for AGM lead acid gel. 
right on the front of the head. The other thing you can look at is you've got the jackets for uh, dust and spray, and then you've got your installation brackets, which we've seen in another tutorial. Sega DCs, 5 and 10 amp, fantastic for grab and go. Really simple, you've got a full dual setup without having to do anything. From $120 to $150 for the, uh, for the 10 amp, very, very cheap. Not a, not, a, not, a, uh, not a poor solution in any way, shape or form. Everything's really highly rated as far as the cabling goes right through to the Sigma Plus. And again, if you've got a, a 10 amp Sigma plug in your vehicle, just use the 5 amp. Again, do not push loads right to the limits. If you do that, something will fail. And you don't want to be out in the bush with things failing. Three or four times a week, we'll get calls from people shutting the unit down from dead shorting and uh, overdrawing from the unit. Um, and uh, even though the, the reset is in the instructions, they'll still call us. That means that they haven't read the instructions in the first place and you save yourself a lot of grief by reading the instructions. We'll cover that off in another tutorial as well. So what I've got over here, the other thing is you can make little adapters up. So this here is on my unregulated input. So I'll just make a dial with an Anderson on it and then I'll connect my unregulated solar panel to this. And the other thing that I use quite a bit of is I have a wire lead like this. I can run two fridges quite happily out of Anderson because the Anderson has a maximum of 20 amp output. So running a wire lead like this from our partners is very easy to get, cheap enough to actually buy, and they're great to be able to use up one of the one Anderson and use multiple points, and then you've still got the rest free. So that's the reason we use a 2.1 here. You could connect that to a, a SIGA plug, have it plugged in, but then it takes up uh, all of your output space, there's no really need to do that. And we'll be at the show, the Sydney show on the 13th uh, of April and also the show on the 9th up in Queensland. If you've got any questions uh, between now and then, um, by all means contact at Nomad PDU. Have a look at our educational tutorials on nomadpdu.com.au. Just click on the link, have a look at it. If we've missed anything or you want to see something specific, please email us uh, and we'll get onto it as quick as we can and we'll post it. We want to obviously give as much information the people out there and to prevent them from having any any dramas when they're uh, they're out doing their camping so again nomadpdu.com to you uh, we'll hear from you soon if not we'll see you up one of the shows uh, up and coming so again happy camping we'll talk soon bye